In Unit 1 in Physical Science, we learned that all matter tends to have four fundamental characteristics. As we look around at everything that's been created in the universe, we see that all matter seems to have mass and volume. That's the definition of matter. Also, that mass is packed into a certain amount of volume, which is density, and gravity pulls on that mass a certain amount, giving that matter weight. Those are the four fundamental characteristics of all matter in the universe. In Unit 2, we learned that there are a diversity of different properties and characteristics that all matter has. And we can understand those characteristics better by breaking them down into two broad categories. Physical properties and chemical properties. Physical properties are characteristics observed without changing the substance to a different substance. And chemical properties can only be observed when the substance is changed to a completely different substance than it was before. So those were the first two units in physical science. In this unit, we're going to not just be categorizing properties of matter. We're going to be categorizing matter itself into eight different categories of matter. So in this unit, we're going to work at understanding all matter in the universe by understanding where that matter fits into eight categories that can pretty much sum up all different types of matter. But in order to put matter into these categories, first of all, you need to understand the basics of matter. And in this lesson, we're going to nail down those basics by understanding the building blocks that make matter up. Now, even though there's eight different categories that all matter in the universe can be put into, there's not that many building blocks. In fact, there's only three building blocks that you need to understand in order to understand the different ways that we make sense of the different types of matter. Those three building blocks are words that I've used in the previous units that are probably familiar to you, but now we're going to take those words and understand what they mean in a scientific way. The first word, one that we've used from the beginning, is the word atom. And we say that an atom is the fundamental unit of matter. Now here's what fundamental doesn't mean. I'm not saying that atoms are the smallest possible pieces that make up matter. Because we know that even atoms can be broken apart into smaller pieces, protons, neutrons, and electrons. The reason I bring them up is because you need to understand that atoms are made up of smaller pieces. So what makes atoms the fundamental unit of matter? Atoms are the fundamental unit because they are the smallest piece of a type of matter that is that type of matter. For example, here I have pictured for you a gold atom. This gold atom is the smallest piece of gold that is actually still gold. Now, most of the time in the real world, if you have gold, you're going to have more than just one atom. You're going to have a collection of gold atoms. But if you break that collection of gold atoms down, the smallest possible piece of gold you can have that's still gold is a single atom of gold. If we were to break apart this atom and split apart those protons, neutrons, and electrons, it would no longer be gold. We would change the atom to something different. So atoms are the fundamental unit of matter in that they are the smallest piece of matter that we can identify as that type of matter. When we combine atoms together, when we bond them together, we make another building block known as a molecule. And a molecule is simply a group of atoms that are bonded together as a unit to make a new substance. Here I have pictured for you a chlorine molecule. Now notice, when I show you a molecule in this class, I'm going to have atoms that are touching and even overlapping a little bit. Because in real life, those atoms are actually overlapping a little bit. As we understand molecules, we understand that the reason molecules form is because atoms share their parts with each other. They share their electrons with each other. So the atoms actually do sort of physically overlap each other. And that's what's happening with this chlorine molecule. 
Now, some molecules are really simple, like this chlorine molecule. Notice it's just two atoms bonded together, and those atoms are actually the same type of atom. Sometimes they get a little more complicated. Here's a sulfur molecule with eight different overlapping atoms bonded together. But at least this one is still made out of the same type of atom. Sometimes, though, we have molecules that are made of different types of atoms. This is a carbon dioxide molecule made up of one carbon bonded to two oxygens. Different atoms, but they're bonded together to make a single unit of a substance with its own characteristic properties, carbon dioxide gas. So that's what a molecule is, and that's how I'm going to picture molecules for you throughout this physical science course. The final building block of matter is known as a crystal. And a crystal is a repeating pattern of bonded atoms or bonded molecules or bonded atoms and molecules. Here I show you an example of potassium chloride, which forms crystals in nature. Potassium chloride is often used as a fertilizer. You can also eat this as a salt substitute if you need extra potassium in your diet. Now notice how I picture a crystal for you. I show you the individual repeating pattern of atoms or molecules, and I show you the crystal lattice network in the background showing that these are all bonded together in that repeating pattern. Here's an example of another substance that forms crystals. This is calcium carbonate, which we commonly refer to as limestone. Notice that calcium carbonate has calcium atoms and carbonate molecules, but the atoms and molecules are bonded together in a repeating pattern with that crystal network shown in the background. This is also a crystal, even though it contains molecules as part of the crystal. So these are the three basic building blocks. All matter is made up of atoms. Those atoms can combine with each other and share their electrons and overlap each other to make molecules. Or those atoms can arrange themselves in repeating patterns to make crystals. And then the other possibility is that sometimes those molecules will jump right into the crystal as well and form within those repeating patterns also. So it's a lot to take in and a lot to make sense of. As we learn throughout this unit, we're going to keep coming back to these three building blocks of matter to help you to continually make sense of them. Right now, let's take a look at how one substance can actually represent all three of the building blocks of matter. And that substance that we're going to take a look at is a very familiar one, water. Water, at its very basic level, is made up of atoms, atoms of hydrogen, and atoms of oxygen. But hydrogen and oxygen all by themselves don't actually make up water. To have water, we have to bond those hydrogens and oxygens together. And in fact, we have to have two hydrogens bonded to one oxygen as a molecule to make water. Now, when hydrogens and oxygen share their electrons and bond together in this way, they have different properties than the individual atoms of hydrogen and oxygen had. That's what water is. It's made up of these water molecules. Interestingly, when you freeze water, these molecules will arrange themselves and adjust themselves into this repeating pattern arrangement of water molecules that are held together with these crystal lattice bonds to make water crystals. We commonly refer to water crystals as ice. Do you notice that these water crystals have six different sides to them? This characteristic of water molecules that they bond together in six-sided shapes is the reason why snowflakes, which are slowly formed water crystals in the atmosphere, the reason why snowflakes have six sides. Because the water molecules tend to form six-sided crystals as they form that lattice, that network in the background. So here's one type of matter, water, that demonstrates all three building blocks of matter. Water is made up of atoms. Those atoms are bonded together a certain way to make molecules. And when frozen, those molecules will arrange themselves in repeating patterns to make crystals.